Hi, this is the part of the evening we call the Teach About, where we get our audience to sing along with us. And even though you're sitting in your living room, you can join in. The song we're gonna do is called We Come From The Mountain, and it has hand motions. So I'll teach those to you and you'll be able to sing along. We start with, we come from the mountain, you make a mountain with your hands. Go back to the mountain, you make a kind of a hitchhiking motion. Go back to the mountain, turn the world around. You make a W with your fingers and turn the world around. The second verse says, we come from the fire. The next verse says, we come from the water. The next one says, we come from the sky. My hands have probably disappeared. We come from the sky. And the last one, just to see if you're still awake, has one of each one of those in there. Okay, so whenever we're ready, we'll start and you can join in. We come from the mountain. We come from the mountain. Go back to the mountain. You all did a great job. That song was actually by Harry Belafonte, and we modified it so more people could sing along. And it was one of uh, Pete Seeger really liked it when we sang that song. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoy singing it. I'm New York State Senator Pete Harkin, and I'm honored to be with you on this Mother's Day as we honor Toshi Seeger and all her and Pete's accomplishments with Clearwater. Her environmental legacy lives on. I'm working with Clearwater today on the just transition for Indian Point, and I thank them as an important stakeholder. And with your support, Clearwater will be around for generations to come. Maybe I'll start a little early, uh, since people are listening. Um, and I want to really thank Tina for an exquisite um, remembrance of her mother and how deeply connected to the earth Toshi was and say that just reinforce that that's all our responsibility right now. We've got to adjust our way of being as humans on this planet to reconnect in, in the way that the First Nations and indigenous people around the world are connected and think about that in all our actions, in our planning, in our projects, etc. Um, and for me, Toshi was very much of a mentor. In some ways, she probably influenced me as much or more than anyone else. I've had the privilege of working with Dr. King and certainly with her husband, Pete Seeger, but in subtle ways that I didn't maybe even realize at the time, um, I volunteered for Clearwater. I was a litter picker. And Toshi Seeger knew that people should be recycling and figured that if hundreds or, in fact, thousands of people were coming to Revival, that this was a good opportunity to get them recycling and see that it's easy and practical and the right thing to do. In those days, you know, now recycling is the law of the land, but in those days, not so much. And um, 
A few people were recycling in their homes and finding a place at the back of the landfill where there might be 55-gallon drums for mm, your mm. bottles and cans. But very, mm, no one was doing public recycling. But Toshi saw the value in getting people to actually do it, not just talk about it, not just think about it. Um, and she set up systems all over Croton Point Park where um, there would be a triangle with a flag and a recycling emblem. And this face of the triangle was for glass bottles and jars. The next face was for mm, plastic, mm. And, and we used much less plastic then. And the last face of the triangle was for um, metal cans. Uh, and then we would take all that material and sort it and package it and market it. And, um, and hundreds of thousands of people were affected by Toshi's insistence that this was the right thing to do. It was necessary. Let's make it practical and, um, and fun. And indeed, uh, not only did litter picking get people recycling, sometimes for the first time, but by keeping the grounds clean, um, people were less likely to litter. So if the litter pickers picked up uh, litter off the ground, the next person might think twice about dropping litter on the ground and we left the park immaculate and were therefore welcome to come back year after year. I went on to become the recycling coordinator for Ulster County and I, I took what I learned from at Clearwater at Revival and played that forward. And again, thousands of people were impacted because Toshi had the vision and the determination to make something that didn't occur, occur, work, and spread out in a big ripple effect that really changed our society and the way we think about and manage materials that we no longer need and call waste, but can be either reduced or reused. So that is... Uh, the inspiration that Toshi was in, in my life, I was first the recycling coordinator uh, mm, as a volunteer mm. in Rosendale, and then I worked for New Pulse, and then I worked for the county, and then I came to Clearwater um, with a 22-year critical care nursing uh, career fit in there uh, um, along the way. But... Um, I have had the privilege, based on uh, the connection to the earth that was so reinforced by uh, the years I spent volunteering at Revival under Toshi's mentorship, and had the privilege of coming back and serving on the board of Clearwater 22 years ago, and then as the environmental director for the last 20 years um, working on getting the Hudson River PCBs cleaned up, uh, making sure that Indian Point, uh, which had a very dangerous history and um, a lot of problems, uh, would be safely closed and decommissioned, and addressing smaller issues that many municipalities, particularly River front cities up and, and towns up and down the river uh, call Clearwater about. Um, so I'm going to just take a few minutes and go over what Clearwater is actively doing right now. Um, one of the things I'm very proud of is that Clearwater doesn't just oppose things. We also provide solutions. That was a, a Toshi-oriented and inspired um, uh, approach to problems is don't focus on the problem, find the solution and implement it. So right now we're helping to coordinate a seven county regional renewable energy implementation plan. 
and um, we're working with a coalition of organizations, including um, the Hudson Valley Regional Council, Scenic Hudson, uh, Sustainable mm -hmm. Hudson Valley, New Yorkers for Clean Power, etc., and so forth. Um, and the Nature Conservancy out on Long Island, which has already developed a roadmap for solar implementation on Long Island. And our goal is to be sure that the seven counties in the Hudson Valley um, are on time and on target to meet the goals of the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, now just being called the Climate Act, which is New York's very aggressive um, uh, set of goals for implementing renewable, a renewable energy economy with storage and efficiency, and also uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and that is going very well. It's on target. And if anyone would like to um, help with that, uh, reach me at manageo at clearwater.org. Then um, I mentioned that Indian Point is going to be closing. The first unit was closed last week or two weeks ago. Um, that is Unit 2 and Unit 3 will be closed in April of 2020 according to a settlement agreement between the nature, between uh, Scenic Cuts, sorry, Riverkeeper, the Attorney General's office, and Entergy, who owns the plant. Um, we've been developing and working with a national coalition that is exploring what is the safest way to decommission a nuclear facility. And in the case of Indian Point, there's close to 2,000 tons of highly radioactive waste that was used in the reactors is now stored in either fuel pools or in um, dry cast storage. Uh, that is a can, a metal can, a canister inside of a concrete cask. Um, and uh, we're working with another coalition in the region. Uh, these are people that have opposed fossil fuel infrastructure um, and are concerned about the Algonquin pipelines that are running under and near Indian Point and the dangers they present along with people who uh, have wanted to see Indian Point closed and safely decommissioned. And that's called um, the Unity for Clean Energy Convergence. And then um, out of those meetings came a recommendation for what was going to be a citizen oversight board and has evolved into state legislation uh, that is the New York State Decommissioning Oversight Board that will bring together all of the agencies that have potential jurisdiction to be working on and discussing and evaluating plans for achieving the safest possible decommissioning of Indian Point. And that will include retaining the workers that have institutional memory so we've also been working to ensure a just transition for those workers. And more recently, um, we held a conference on a just transition for workers that would be potentially displaced as we stop using fossil fuel and shift to a renewable energy economy. Uh, I want to thank New York State Senator Peter Harcum for a very beautiful tribute to Toshi and to the work of Clearwater. He is the sponsor, along with Assembly Member Sandy Galiff, of the New York State Decommissioning Oversight Board. And if you only take away one thing for an action to do uh, from this Clearwater action update, that would be it to call your own state legislators and ask them to support S8158 and A10236, uh, the New York State Decommissioning Oversight Board legislation, so that Indian Point and the other reactors in western New York 
will not only be uh, closed and decommissioned as safely as possible, but that the decommissioning trust funds that were set aside to pay for that uh, will be protected and uh, we will be sure that um, whoever does the decommissioning uh, provides financial surety. Um, we're also trying to prevent additional fossil fuel infrastructure, specifically the um, proposed Dan Scammer frack gas plant. Um, and we've done, I mentioned, uh, a workforce development for a just transition um, uh, webinar recently, and that is will soon be up on the Clearwater website, and there's a link here <coughs> for where people can find that. Uh, also coming up is a Green Jobs webinar. We've done a lot of work with environmental justice and climate justice, and we're partnering with Nubian Directions in Poughkeepsie, uh, WEAC in Harlem, and Push Buffalo in Western New York to feature some really model programs for job training that will help young people from inner cities become part of the workforce that is creating climate solutions and not exacerbating uh, climate problems, the climate crisis. We're working in Newburgh to um, ensure the best possible cleanup of the POF PFOS contamination of Newburgh's drinking water supply with a restoration advisory committee. And um, we just completed um, a, a scientific uh, assessment of runoff from the Queemans Industrial Park, and that might be leading to further uh, action in the future. But um, we do scientific research at, as well as uh, planning and, and implementing um, positive actions. And uh, with the few minutes I have left, I want to tell one more story. Um, I got a call a few years ago before the fracking ban. Clearwater was actively teaching people about the dangers of hydrofracking and uh, wanting to prevent additional fossil fuel infrastructure. National Geographic has recently published an article um, that talks about the methane spike that's been tracked that is directly related to fracking. So what just by uh, trying to fracture the earth and um, get those little bubbles of methane and and uh, bring them up and burn them. Uh, the, you know, there's, um, we wanted to prevent that from happening, whether it be at Dance Gamer, uh in the Algonquin pipeline or for any other purpose. So um, I got a call from Julia Walsh, who was working uh, to organize uh, the the ban fracking campaign in New York. And she said, Mana, can you get Pete to come up to Albany um, on Monday because uh, we've got Mark Ruffalo and a whole lot of people coming to Albany, but we need to get Pete Seeger to join us. So I called Pete and um, I, ex I had explained to Pete what fracking was, and he said, Manna, you know, a lot of people have tried to tell me what this is. You're the first one who made it really clear. So when I called him, he was prepared, and he understood the request. And I hear him turn to Toshi and say, Toshi, Manna wants me to go up to Albany on Monday. But that's our anniversary, and we always spend our anniversary together. And I heard Toshi say in the background, Peter, you go to Albany. If Manna needs you in Albany to help ban fracking, you'd better go, because otherwise you will not be happy. And I'd much rather have you go to Albany and be happy. We'll be together before and after. You tell Manna yes. Pete did, 
Uh, he told me, yes, we arranged the transportation. He went to Albany, and that was the turning point, after, as Clearwater has been responsible for many turning points uh, in the band fracking movement in New York. Uh, Pete went to Albany and said to, uh, was recorded as saying to Andrew Cuomo that, uh, your father was one of the best governors New York has ever had. And if you don't ban fracking, you'll go down in history as one of the worst. And, he, and Pete talked about the impact of fracking on generations to come. So I, I just want to close by saying that Clearwater is known for its three-legged stool of a mission that we do education, inspiration, and action, <laughs> and that um, Pete and Toshi envisioned the clear water to get people out on the river and clean up the river. We got the C Clean Water Act passed, and we've been working daily uh, ever since to protect the well-being of the Hudson river ecology and the well-being of all the people living in its watershed and all the creatures living in its water watershed. So I hope folks will um, take action uh, and also support clear water so we can continue to do our work. We've come through a very difficult time with this pandemic uh, <laughs> causing our um, spring sailing season to be canceled, but um, that doesn't uh, mean that anything else is canceled. Uh, we're re-envisioning how to use the sloop as we come out of this pandemic uh, and do so very cautiously, but our environmental action uh, goes on on a daily basis. And uh, thank you, Toshi Seeger, and the whole Seeger family uh, for the contributions you've made and the inspiration you've been, you've offered. Thank you. It's, here it's, we are. It's raining here in Lake Worth, Florida. This is Mel and Vinny, and this is a, a Brownie McGee song. One, two, three, four. I'm a stranger here. Just rode in your town I'm a stranger here Just rode in your town And because I'm a stranger Everybody dog me round Well, I wonder why so Well, I wonder why people mistreat strangers so A stranger is the best friend you will never know I'm gonna call my daddy to send me my railroad fare. I'm gonna call my daddy to send me my railroad fare. And if he don't send it, I won't mind walking there.
I won't be no stranger, won't have no stranger blue. I'm a stranger here, just grown in your town. I'm a stranger here, just grown in your town. And because I'm a stranger, everybody dog me round. Well, I wonder why people mistreat strangers so. Well, I wonder why people mistreat strangers so. The good book says you reap just what you sow. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, well, that Brownie McGee used to play with Pete with the Almanac Singers, and uh, Pete used to be a uh, play at square dances, and uh, allegedly, at least what I've heard, that. Uh, that he was playing in one, and, and he he met Toshi, who was a dancer, and uh, and what that brings us to the song that I'd like to do, uh, that uh, we used to go to the Beacon Sloop Club square dances that were on St. Valentine's Day every year, and uh, we'd have a big square dance, and everybody there, Pete and Toshi included, would 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 dance at this wonderful event uh, in the in the Rondout School, Rondout School there in Beacon. And that's Roseville Fair by Bill Staines. Sing along at home with us. Oh, the night was clear, and the stars were shining, and the moon came up so white in the sky, and the people gathered round, and the band was tuning. I can hear them now. Come to ride. You were dressed in blue, and you looked so lovely. Just a gentle flower of a small town girl, and you took my hand, and we stepped to the music, and with a single smile. You became my world, and we danced all night to the fiddle and the banjo. They're different tunes, sing with the air. So long ago, but I still remember when we fell in love at the Rose Fair. And we rocked for hours in the front porch chair. And the year went by from the day I met you that I made you mine at the Roseville Fair. And we danced all night to the fiddle and the banjo. So long ago, but I still remember when we fell in love at the Postal Fair.
Thanks for tuning in. This next song um, is one I wrote. And you know, I read somewhere that Toshi taught Pete to sail and that they had a small fiberglass boat to mess around in where you could see the pollution in the river. So after the sloop Clearwater was built, Toshi and Pete built a small scale Clearwater called the Woody Guthrie. And they let the Beacon Sloop Club use it to take people out for free sails. Through this program, I learned to sail and to talk about the river. And this led to working as second maid on the Clearwater, where we did school and public programs, putting a big, long otter trawl net into the water and hauling it up to work songs, shanties, where Johnny goes off to sea and Nancy waits on shore. Well, it didn't look like that on the decks of the Clearwater when I crewed, even in the mid 80s. So I wrote this song from the perspective of the woman going off to sea, and it's called The Sailor's Husband's Lament. Say, but I could see the, the likes and the hearts yeah. fly by. Yeah, you know, 
Well, this next song was written uh, as a result of uh, we being sailors on the, on the Woody Guthrie. And every weekday night, the, we would take Pete and Toshi's boat out, which that's what it was back then, um, out uh, for a three hour cruise or tour um, out of Beacon Harbor into the, 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 with the, the Newburgh Bay Triangle. And, and out there, we, we, would, we would sail and show people how beautiful the Hudson is and, and how we needed to clean it up and so everyone can enjoy this thing, sailing this gorgeous boat that did not have a motor. And uh, at the time, it does now, but anyway, we had to sail it out and we'd go from the, the, the Newburgh Beacon Bridge, but if we knew we were down far down by Bannerman's Island, we were too far away and we'd never get back by nine o'clock because we'd go out at six um, to, in time for the folks to, to get the train because we'd be busy rowing or get stuck somewhere. So this song emanated from that and, uh, and it uh, b borrowed from uh, a, a, a TV show from a while back, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> Sit right back and you hear a tale, tale of a fateful trip that started from this Hudson port aboard that tiny ship. Her mate was a mighty sailing lass, a skipper brave, I'm sure. Twelve guests and crew set sail that day for a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. Weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the Woody would be lost. The Woody would be lost. Oh. The ship ran aground on the shores of this charted Hudson Isle. They have to make the best of things Cause Toshi sees for miles Toshi sees for miles Ah No phones, no lights, no motor launch Not a single luxury Unless you're used to sawdust There's nary a place to be There's nary a place to be Oh the first mate and the skipper to complain their very best. They pass the blame around the deck and, and disregard the guests. They disregard the guests. Oh. Well, the tide came up without a winch and set that sailboat free. They rode into the harbor and made the train by three. They made the train by three. So come sail with us one night, my friends. You're sure to get a smile from Jim Finnegan. The skipper, too. The plumber. And his wife, Donald. The folk hero. The unemployed. Here on Bannerman's Island. <laughs> that was fun for us. Yeah. Hope it was fun for you. <laughs> okay. Well, The Water is Wide is an old song that Pete's been singing along the river for decades. And in 2008, we were asked to organize the annual membership meeting for Clearwater. And Pete wanted to bring in more folks and do it the way they used to do it. You know, Clearwater was started uh, sailing in 1969, and here this is 2008, and things change. So we made it like a big social gathering with music and food, Toshi's way, because she says, nobody's going to just come to a meeting, you know, have a little food, have a little music. Well, at this annual membership meeting, no one read reports, a great speaker was found, we had stone soup cooking and a potluck dinner. To cap it all off was Toshi's cake ceremony where as it gets dark, everyone gets a piece of cake with a candle in it. And once the candles are all lit, 
we silently think about our hopes for the future and break the silence with a song. And right before that meeting, I got a call from the new executive director asking if we could add a memorial into the schedule for Vic Schwartz. Now, Vic Schwartz was the man who gave Pete the little book, Sloops of the Hudson, the book that inspired Pete to rally others to bring back the beautiful Dutch sailing barges and to draw attention to the river, its beauty, and the pollution. So we knew the cake ceremony was the right place for the memorial. And Vic's widow, Linda, asked Pete to sing The Water is Wide. So you all could sing it with us now and add your harmonies. And as we raise money for the sloop and the organization that saved the Hudson River, and there's still a lot of work to do. So yes. give if you can. Oh, I sing for swim. 
Shakespeare's Pete's words, the seagulls wheel, they turn and die. This last song was written by Tom Winslow, and it was written before the, the boat was launched, it named it the song, It's the Clear Water, and it was named before, and, and the song was written before the boat was actually named. Because they had to take a vote. Right, and here we go. One, two, three, four. Hey, look yonder. Hey, look yonder. What's that I see coming this way? It's clear water. It's clear water with her sail fluttering so gay. So come and get your homemade pies and cakes. Come bring your family down to the bank. It's clear water. It's clear water. We're gonna have a real shebang. Hey, look yonder. Hey, look yonder. What's that I see coming this way? It's clear water. It's clear water. Gonna sail, butter it so gay. We're gonna have some picking and a singing. Some people gonna tell us what they think about cleaning the river and making it healthy. Hurry, brother, go get cramps. Hey, look yonder. Hey, look yonder. What's that I see coming this way? It's clear water. It's clear water. With her sail, butter it so gay. Now some sank for it, and others gave to it. Yes, till 180,000 was gonna lead a lot of more. It's clear water. It's clear water. People just look what we have done. Hey, look kinda. Hey, look yonder, what's that I see coming this way? It's clear water, it's clear water, with her sail, fluttering so gay. Now young and old, we're gonna sail it, black and white, gonna have a lot of fun. It's clear water. It's clear water, we're gonna sail it till the job is done. Hey, look yonder, hey, look yonder, what's 
past that I see coming this way. It's clear water. It's clear water with her sail. Whether it's okay. Hey, we want to thank Fred Gillen Jr., Manajo Green, and Tina Bonger for all the, the work you did putting this together. And Fred, thanks for not forgetting us because we're in, here in Florida. That's right. And uh, good luck to you all. And there's a pot of gold out there that, uh, that, that surely Clearwater needs. You know. Give if you can. <laughs> thanks for being yeah. here.